Good evening and welcome to our Bible study here at the Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Monroe, Louisiana. We're continuing our study in the Purple Book, as we have been in this book for some while now. We're in Chapter 4, Lesson 4 in our book, and uh, that's page 53 in our book. The title of our lesson this evening is The Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. Open now, I pray, our understanding. Give us receptive ears and hearts and minds. Give us understanding and clarity. Give clarity of speech and thought to the teacher and that your will might be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism in the Spirit, also known as baptism with the Holy Spirit, is a Christian theological concept that occurs when the Holy Spirit fills a believer's mind, gives them gifts, and takes possession of their abilities. This is said to happen when a believer accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is associated with the incorporation into the Christian church. The bestowal of spiritual gifts upon the believer and the empowerment of that person for Christian ministry. The purpose of the baptism of the Spirit is to empower believers for service, to witness, for spiritual warfare, and for boldness in their testimonies. Jesus commended the disciples to, uh, commanded the disciples to begin the work to which he had called them until they, but they could not begin this work until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. You read that in uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. I will read those scriptures in your hearing. Luke chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. <clears throat> and ye are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. And that's Jesus speaking of giving them the Holy Spirit to empower them to do the ministry for which they were called. Question number one in our lesson this evening, what did John the Baptist promise Jesus would do? According to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, it says, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I baptize you with water. John baptized those who repented of their sins and turned to God. He baptized them with water. John baptized people as a sign that they had asked God to forgive their sins and had decided to live as he wanted them to live. Baptism was an outward sign of commitment. To be effective, it had to be accompanied by an inward change of attitude, leading to a changed life. The work of the Holy Spirit. John said Jesus would baptize the, them with the Holy Spirit and fire. This looked ahead to the day of Pentecost that is recorded in the book of Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit would be sent 
as cloven tongues of fire empowering his followers to preach the good news also symbolized the work of the Holy Spirit to bring God's judgment on those who refused to turn from their sins. Question number two, how did Peter describe the Gentiles encounter with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 11 verses 15 through 17? As Peter began the pre to preach in the introduction of his sermon, the Holy Spirit engaged the Gentiles in the home where they were. And it was as on the day of Pentecost, they were together. And that's when Peter realized that the gospel was for all people, not just the Jews. He remembered the Lord's words, wherein he said, John baptizes with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he had given on the day of Pentecost when they believed the Lord Jesus Christ, he now says, who can stand in God's way? God convincingly showed Peter that there was no difference between Jew and Gentile when it came to hearing and accepting the gospel and Christ as their savior and that any person who did would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Question number three, what did Jesus tell his disciples they were to do after he ascended to heaven? Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Luke chapter 24, verse 49 stay here in Jerusalem. He would send the Holy Spirit as the Father had promised who would empower them for service. What were they to do after he had ascended? They were to stay in Jerusalem until they were empowered to go forth to do their ministry. What were the disciples to do after Jesus ascended according to Acts chapter 1? Verses 4 and 5, Jesus being assembled with the disciples in Jerusalem through the Holy Spirit commanded them not to depart from there, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, John truly baptized with water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Question number four, <clears throat> read the following five accounts of people who received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. How did they receive the Holy Spirit? What happened when they received the Holy Spirit? The first account is Acts chapter two, verses one through six. On the 50th day after the Sabbath of the Passover, they were all with one accord, one purpose, in one place. And the sound of a mighty rushing wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared divided a cloven tongues as of fire, and one set on each person that was there in the house. And as a result, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with tongues. That's known languages, diverse languages. As the Spirit gave them utterance or gave them ability, languages that they had not previously known. This is the start of the universal outreach of the church because they are being sent Jerusalem, to Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the earth to witness. How would they be able to do it? They are given the power by the Holy Spirit to speak in the languages, in the regions where they were to go. 
The next account in the book of Acts of those who received the Holy Spirit, how did they receive it and what happened when they received the Spirit is Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 19. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 19. The apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. And you know, Samaria was Gentile territory. But the apostles at Jerusalem heard that they had received the word of God. So they sent Peter and John to them, who prayed for them when they arrived, laying their hands on them, prayed for them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And after receiving the Holy Spirit, he asked them, and they said up until now that they had not been, they had only been baptized and had not received the Holy Spirit. They had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right after laying their hands on them and their receiving the Spirit, Simon, who is a sorcerer, was present. He saw them lay their hands on these persons and their receiving of the Holy Spirit. So Simon said, take this money. He offered them money and give me this power that on whomever I lay my hands, they too will receive the Holy Spirit. If you read the rest, rest of the text, you will know that things did not end well for Simon, thinking that he could buy the Holy Spirit. What happened when others received the Holy Spirit and how did they receive it and what happened when they received the Holy Spirit? The next account that we consider is Acts chapter 9, verses 17 through 19. Ananias, a disciple of the Lord, was sent by the Lord to the household of Judas where he would encounter a man named Saul of Tarsus who was there praying. Ananias was instructed by the Lord to go in and lay his hand on Saul, speaking to him, explaining that the Lord had sent him to help him to receive his sight and for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ananias did as he was commanded of the Lord, went, laid his hand on Saul, and as it were, immediately, as though they were scales that fell from his eyes, and he received his sight at once, he arose immediately after that and was baptized. That's the result of him receiving the Holy Spirit. He then received food, he was strengthened, and then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. The next account of persons receiving the Holy Spirit, how they received it, and what happened after they received it is Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was speaking to the Gentiles, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Those of the circumcision who believed were astonished that these Gentiles could hear the word and receive this word. And as many, so many of them came to Peter because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It had been, the Spirit of God had been poured out on these Gentiles. For they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. This is the result of these Gentiles. Peter had gone to Cornelius' house. For he had been summoned there. The Spirit of God had sent him there uh, with these men because Cornelius had been a man who had believed he had done great things for the people, but he had not received the Holy Spirit. And so Peter was to go and spend time with him, preaching to him, explaining the word to him, and he too received the Holy Spirit. So Peter, while there, preaching to Cornelius' household and to others in that area, Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized, 
who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay with them a few days more. So in this text, this 10th chapter of Acts, verses 44 through 48, we see that these persons have received the Holy Spirit, that they are now speaking in tongues and other languages, and they are magnifying God. The final text uh, that we consider, or the final account that we consider in this series, this question of what happened to those who received, how did they receive the Holy Spirit, and what did they do as a result of it is Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. While Apollos was in the region, Paul traveled through the regions, the interior regions of the country, and he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers he asked these persons, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? Their reply to him was, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then, what baptism did you receive? Paul asked. They replied, the baptism of John. John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John told the people to believe in one who would come later, who was mightier, greater than he was, and his reference was to Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hand on them, the Holy Spirit came down on them and spoke in other languages. They spoke in other languages and they prophesied, meaning they preached, they shared the gospel. This is a result of their receiving the Holy Spirit. Paul laid his hands on them. That's how they received it. And then the result of their receiving it is that they spoke in other languages and prophesied, witnessing, sharing the word. The final question of our lesson this evening is question five, which asks, who does the Father give the Holy Spirit to? And our reference scripture is Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, reads, if ye the... If ye, or you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Who does the Father give the Holy Spirit to? Those who ask him, speaking of believers now, not just anyone, but believers, as he promised to give all believers after his death and resurrection and return to heaven according to the gospel of John chapter 15 and verse 26 John 15:26 this is an additional scripture that I'm giving you it's not in the lesson but it helps to verify what I just said John 15:26 says but when the comforter is come whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So these are the words of Christ speaking to those who have come to believe in him. And that whole 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, he talks about the relationship of the believer with the Son and the Father. Well, that's our lesson for this evening. I pray that you are helped by the lesson, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the lesson this evening. We pray that those who have participated and will participate are 
join in will be helped by what they've heard. It will bring some clarity in their understanding about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that we will be on one accord empowered to do your will. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those among us who are incarcerated. We pray for those who are interned or put in to facilities, skilled care facilities, some in nursing homes, some in hospitals, some at home with caregivers. We pray not only for the patients, but we also pray for the strength and patience of the caregivers. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our vacation Bible school, which will start on June 3rd, that you will bless us to please you with our efforts and that those who are in attendance will learn of your word. Then give us, I pray, the ability and the decision in our own hearts and minds to live what we have learned. Bless all now who have been a part of this Bible study and who will be a part of it in days to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.